So for the past couple of episodes, we've been talking about security when it comes to websites. And one of you guys sent me a message reminding me of a mistake that I made a few episodes back when we created our comment section episodes. So I figured since we talked about security for the past couple of episodes, it would be a good idea to show you guys how to fix the mistake that I made, even if you didn't follow along in these episodes regarding the comment section. Because this is a mistake you will run into if you make a PHP website that has any kind of form inside of it. So you need to know about this little security breach here. So as you guys can see, I do actually have some code in front of me. I also have the website in front of me that we actually made with the comment section. Now, the basic idea behind this mistake that I made is that inside any kind of browser, at least most browsers today, you have something called the developer tool. Meaning that right now, as you guys can see, I can actually right click on anything. Let's actually go ahead and find a comment here. I can right click on a comment, inspect the elements, and then we can actually see the actual code, at least the front end code of this website. Now the problem here is that I can actually change the code inside my developer tool. Meaning that if I want to change the look of this website because it's front end only, I can actually go in and change the background color or whatever I want to do. And it will actually change inside the website as long as I don't refresh the browser. Because when we refresh the browser, everything is gonna go back to normal again. So the error that I made happens when we didn't make a second security check if the user who posted these posts down here was the correct user. Now the place that I needed to do that check was when we actually edited or deleted any of these posts down here. Now, of course, right now, as you guys can see, I can actually do that because I'm not logged in. So just to show you guys what it is I'm talking about, let's actually go ahead and log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in as Daniel. And as you guys can see, it says you are logged in as Daniel. If I go down to one of my comments down here, you guys can see there's two comments from admin and two from Daniel. Now I shouldn't be able to edit or delete these comments down here because I didn't make them. But because we have the developer tool and we haven't done a second security check, I can actually do it. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and right click on my delete button, for example, on one of the comments that I made, inspect the element. And inside my developer tool, which is quite tiny here, we can actually see the entire form of this delete button. We can even see the hidden inputs. And this is where we have our problem. Because right now we used our comment ID from the database as our value, which some people can argue, you know, should you use the ID of, you know, specific tables from your database, because we shouldn't let, you know, users know about the IDs, or should we use two pieces of data and match them together to find the correct post? So we can actually take the author name or the date the post was submitted, and then that way find the correct post. So there's some pros and cons to doing both ways. If you actually do use the author and the date, then there's a greater chance of something, you know, wrong happening when you do actually want to find the right post. But by using the common ID, which is the actual primary key of our table, you tell the user some information they shouldn't know. So you can argue which one's better and it depends on you guys. But what we can actually do here, if I do actually go in here, I can actually see my input that's hidden, that has a common ID of six. And now if I were to go down and right click on one of the other people's posts and inspect the element of their post, I can actually go in and try to find the common ID of their post. So I need to right click on the reply button, which is down here, inspect the elements. And as you guys can see, we get another form where we can see that the common ID of this specific post is seven which is not a post that I made, it's somebody else who made this post. But if I go back to my post up here, right click on the delete button, inspect the element and change the value to seven inside the developer tool. And because I haven't refreshed the browser yet, it's still gonna see this as the correct info. I can actually close the developer tool. And if I hit the delete button, notice that the admin post down here that's called ASD, ASD, ASD will disappear. So now we only have one admin post. We should not be able to do this. So there's a couple of ways to, to fix this. Um, the best way to do this would be if we actually checked for the current uh, user ID when we want to do something either deleting or editing from the database. So we need to check when we load the browser 
if we're the person who actually created the post, which we've done right now. This is actually what we're doing here. But we also need to check if it's the correct user ID when we do actually click the button. So going into our code, we're going to go ahead and change a couple of things, just minor changes, which is the fact that we're going to go back to our index.php. And down where we have our delete button, which is actually not inside the index ID, we do actually need to go into our comments.ink.php file. And in here, we need to go down to where we have our get comments function, which is the one that actually displays all the comments inside our website. And we need to find the delete button. Now, do bear in mind, you need to do this fix for both the edit and the delete button. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys with the delete button so you know how to actually fix it. So our delete button is actually right down here, up here. And what we need to do is we do actually need to bring in our session ID inside our function as well when we do actually you know, perform our action to actually delete this comment. So inside our delete comments function that we we're going to run as soon as we hit the delete button, we're going to add a comma and then another variable, which is going to be the session ID. Now, right now, we do actually need to check what we call our session ID. I don't actually remember. I guess we're just going to go ahead and create a variable from the session ID. So I'm going to go ahead and say dollar sign um, ID is equal to the session ID. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy my dollar sign ID and insert it inside my delete comments function down here. So now we're actually bringing the connection and the current ID of the person I'm actually logged in as right now. Now you might ask, why don't we include it as an input like we've done down here? Why don't we just make a hidden input with our comment or current session ID? That is because you can change it inside developer tool. We don't want people to be able to change both of them. So we're going to go ahead and bring it in inside our function instead. So now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and save this information. And what we need to do now is actually go down to delete comments function and change the information accordingly and do our second check to make sure that it's the right user who actually clicked the delete button. So if we go down to our delete comments down here, we need to make sure we include our new variable inside the parentheses. So we're going to say variable ID. And we're going to go ahead and use it down inside our SQL statement. Because inside here, we just simply say, you know, delete from comments where the comment ID is equal to the common ID. But we also want to check that the user ID is the same as the person who actually made the post. So down here, I'm going to go ahead and include a and. And then I'm going to go ahead and say that the ID, or at least let's actually go ahead and check what the name of the column was. Just going to go ahead and open up my PHP my admin here. Comment section, comments. And inside here, we can actually see that the ID of the user is inside a UID column. So that's the one we need to check for. So we're going to say and UID is equal to variable ID. And that's basically all we have to do. So let's actually go ahead and save this and go back to our website. Let's actually go ahead and do a hard reset like so. And let's actually see if we can uh, delete the other person's comment. Well, we do actually get an error message here. Boop, boop, boop. Let's actually go ahead and check what this is all about. Line 42, which is, ah, for some reason I didn't actually include this in here. I thought I did. Let's actually go ahead and check why this is happening. Ah, okay. That's because our delete comments function is also down inside our reply button, which it actually shouldn't be. So let's actually go and delete that one. That's because we didn't actually create the reply button in a previous episode. So it will give us an error inside the reply button. So let's actually just go and delete that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's not part of this episode. Now I refresh and as you guys can see, no errors. If I go down, right click on the reply button of the second post, inspect the element. And right now I will actually say that the common ID is eight, which I can tell right here. So let's go ahead and do the same trick as we did last time. I'm going to go ahead and change the value to eight directly inside the developer tool, like so, and try and delete. And as you guys can see, the post is still here.
And that's because we're doing the second check where we check if we're in fact the same person who actually made this post down here when we also click the submit button or the delete or edit button in this case. So this actually fixed it. Uh, just to show you guys the other thing that I mentioned about comparing the author and the clock instead of using the common ID. Uh, and this is sort of a bonus thing. We already fixed the mistake that I made. So if you guys want to follow on this part, it's a pretty good thing to know. So if I go back into my comments.ink.php file and go down to, for example, my delete form, you guys can see that right now we're using a hidden input with the comment ID in order to find the right comment. When we go down to delete function, search the database uh, inside the comments table where common ID is equal to common ID. So if you want to use the author name and the clock instead, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and delete this line of code because we don't need it. And instead, we're going to reference to the UID up here and the date, which you also have up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, we do actually need to have an actual input down here. So we do actually need to, to keep this, but we're just going to go ahead and change the name and the value. So right now I'm going to change the name from CID to UID. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the value to what we have up here, which is row two UID. Then we need to include a second one because we need to match up two different pieces of data to see if they both exist inside the right row inside the table. So we're going to go ahead and change the second line here from UID to date and as well change the value. And that was row date without the two. So now that we have this, we can actually go back into our delete function, which is down here. And we need to make sure we bring in not the common ID, but the UID and the date. And now we simply need to replace these inside our SQL statement. So right, right now we're actually checking for the common ID. We need to check for the UID. I'm just going to go ahead and go after UID, say and, and then we're going to go ahead and check for the date. And I do believe if you go into the database that it is called date. So that's actually what we need to go in and look for. So we'll say date should be equal to double quotes, variable date. And for some reason we're getting a small error. That's because these do not need to be double quotes. They need to be single quotes. There we go. And that's basically it. Um, this is all we had to do in order to change this. This should work essentially. <laughs> so if we do actually go in and try to just simply delete one of our comments here, let me actually refresh the website just to make sure. Delete, and it does not delete for some reason. Let's actually go ahead and double check why that is. Okay, so I made another mistake here. I make quite a lot of mistakes today. So we don't actually check for the UID here you know, with the actual UID we typed inside the input, because right now we're checking for the UID two different places. We're checking for the session ID, which is the same as the UID. And instead of the UID down here, we do actually need to check for the author name, not the UID. So we're going to go ahead and change all these UIDs that we wrote here into author instead, because if we actually go into the database, you guys can see that we have UID inside our comments table and we have author and we want to check it with author and with the date, not the UID and the date. So knowing that, let's actually go ahead and change the code. So all the UIDs down here are going to be author, except for the one we matches with the session ID. And we also need to make sure we change this inside our form up here with the delete button. So instead of UID, we're going to check for author. If I can actually spell that correctly. There we go. Now we need to make sure this is actually row two author that we need to write here. Let's actually go ahead and check. I do actually believe this should be row without the two author. So now that we've done this, let's actually see if this works. If it doesn't work, it's probably with row two and not, you know, again, with the bad naming, I sort of named it better last time. So if I try and delete, you guys can see it's been deleted. So now it works. So, that's basically how we can fix this. And I hope you guys found this useful. It's definitely something you should know about when you make websites. I don't know why it slipped my mind when we were actually making the comment section. There's so much things I have to 
say it once and English is not my native language so sometimes I slip up. So I hope you guys can forgive me on that part. So I'll see you guys next time.